really stood out to you and, and led you to believe that Lori killed her kids? Oh, boy. <laughs> There's a lot of information, uh, a lot of evidence that was provided for that one. Um, I think it was kind of what the prosecutor said at the end. It was a money motivator uh, that she learned her lesson with Charles Vallo, um, that she didn't get his $1 million and she made sure um, it, it was seen premeditated that she made sure to um, transfer Tylee's um, funds into her account and just prepping for um, Tylee's death, I think. And also just the text messages. I think those were solid evidence as well that she was constantly asking, you know, uh, what the death percentages were for her kids and talking, you know, about evil spirits that they needed to be get, gotten rid of. Um, it was just clearly encouraging um, her brother, Alex Cox, to um, do some harm because they were that evil spirits in them. So Alex Cox, um, as I'm sure you know, uh, is dead, um, and he's not going to be tried. So we'll we'll never really know the no. full story. Do you believe he was the one who killed the kids? I do. Yes, I do. Um, his, I, I from what I remember, there was so much evidence that there was uh, his palm prints or fingerprints on the bag. Um, there was consistent evidence that he was in the area. I mean, that's actually eventually how they found where the graves were um, be, because his cell phone um, on the cast report, his cell phones was pinging off towers exactly in the location that the grave sites were. So I do believe that he carried out um, Lori's orders. I do. That's funny you say, that's interesting you say Lori's orders. So the defense tried to make it seem almost that you know, she didn't know what was happening, and maybe it was Chad was the ringleader. Chad was the one who was controlling her. What did you think of that argument? Was there any? Did you have any hesitation at any point in saying, you know what, maybe Lori didn't know what was going on? There was one text message between Chad and Lori where she asked if there's a plan. Is there a well-orchestrated plan? And he seemed to say there is a plan. Did you think at any point that Lori might not know what's going on? Oh boy, you're asking some tough questions. Um, I, I, these, I listen, I've been following <laughs> this case from the beginning, so I have. I'm so happy to talk to you right now about it. I do believe, from what I heard from the evidence, that she encouraged her brother in multiple circumstances to commit crimes. Did she know exactly what happened to the kids? I don't know. <clears throat> I I knew that. I do think that she knew that they were killed, um, probably to get rid of their evil spirit. But do I think that she knows under what circumstances, um, where, you know, how it was done? I don't know about that. Um, nothing was ever presented to us that gave us any inclination that she knew exactly what happened to them. Well, her hair being found on the duct tape that was wrapped around JJ an argument could, be, argument could be made she was there when he was ki killed. Do you believe that? That one was hard. I do think the defense had a solid um, argument with that, um, that, you know, an, a mother's hair could be found on clothing and that, you know, the bodily fluids could have possibly displaced it. I, I do think they had a solid argument against that hair. So that wasn't actually the hair itself was not a deciding um, factor for me, I don't think. Well, well, it's interesting you say that Lori might not have known exactly what happened, but you felt confident enough um, if you would have gone into the deliberation room. And obviously, you know, you would have had a conversations and maybe your feeling would have been different. But to say that you would have found her guilty of first degree murder and conspiracy to commit the murder of the children. If Walk me through that. What was it about the evidence that you said, you know what, even if. She might not know of what known of exactly what happened to the kids. She murdered them. She was a part of that first degree murder. She she directed her brother. She was part of the plot. What what evidence led you there? Well, the judge made it extremely clear to us um, that we may not get the smoking gun, like that we're not going to get the um, the text, you know, from Lori that to kill my kids for me, Alex. Um, that 
we she didn't actually physically have to kill her kids for you know for her to be convicted of murder i just think that there was enough evidence circumstantial evidence that she planned it she encouraged it and saw it through and that to me um is what the judge had instructed us to look at you mentioned the text messages i I think those were pivotal Uh, my opinion was that's the closest we could probably get to that smoking gun Although I will tell you, and I'm curious your thoughts, the phone calls, the phone calls between Chad and her son, Colby Ryan, and her sister, Summer Shiflet. what did you guys think of that? Oh, boy. Um, boy, those were tough to hear. Really tough. Um, so much emotion from her sister, um, from her son, so much emotion, and just zero emotion from her. Um, saying that they're you know safe you know don't worry about it um i don't know it was just it was so bizarre that these people these family members that she's loved all of her life and she's had she has zero emotion on the phone with them and has stands by her her story i it was just so bizarre that she didn't give in and cry or just show any emotion to them at all that, that fact that she didn't show that emotion, and also, like you said, kind of in the courtroom not showing emotion, would that have guided your decision? I think it would have helped a little bit, maybe, just to see, you know, that maybe I was manipulated by Chad. You know, that... I don't know. Like, just having zero emotion about your kids missing or losing your um, living son. I mean, who you're losing your relationship with him. You're losing your relationship with your sister. Like, I I honestly think that a a human being that thinks that they know that they've done wrong would have definitely showed more emotion than that. Just there's just so many people hurt by this. Yeah. And you're hearing about demons and dark spirits and death percentages and these religious figures and notions I I'm still shocked at what I heard from that. What were you what were you thinking when you heard about the, the religious indoctrin, indoctrination and and castings? What were you thinking about? <laughs> well, it sounded like a cult to me. I mean, but you know, the, the defense had a good point. You know, they only had six people or, you know, however many in their little cults, you know. So um I just think that in this particular case, religion and their beliefs were used to manipulate people. And I know that can happen. Um, I'm very open about religion and people's religious beliefs and I don't cast judgment on people, but um, when your religious beliefs and you start manipulating others, especially to do, you know, these violent crimes, you know, that's where I just don't, it's just bizarre to me. I just don't understand how somebody could reach that point. Did you think that it was Chad manipulating her into this at all? I do. Um, I do believe in the beginning when she met him, um, the the defense did mention that, you know, she was a loving mother and, you know, had a very normal life. Yes, she was part of the LDS church, um, which is no big deal. I mean, a lot of people, and especially in Boise, are part of the LDS church. But I do believe things changed for her. And, um, in October, I think it was October 2018, when she met him, that I do believe that he manipulated her into believing some certain ideas. And she, um, for some reason, um, joined him in those beliefs. By the way, I just want to go back to Tammy for a second, um, because you said you had some hesitation there. The prosecution presented the evidence that she and Chad got married two weeks after Tammy died that she was shopping for wedding rings before Tammy died. What did you think of that piece, those pieces of evidence? That was pretty damning evidence, to be honest with you. Like she's, you know, just shopping for wedding dresses and wedding rings and seemingly, seemingly planning for her new life before his wife died. So, I mean, that right there was evidence that she was also the manipulator ma- manipulator as well. I mean, I did see some texts between her and him that it seemed like she eventually manipulated him, um, asking him, you know, when is, you know, when is Tammy's death percentage going to get to zero? 
um, you know, kind of manipulating him through texts with asking, um, oh, you know, enjoy your family, you know, all this step out of the picture now. Um, those were def definitely manipulation tactics. And I think she used those against Chad um, to get what she wanted in the end. I want to talk about the defense a little bit. They didn't call any witnesses. They just focused their case purely on questioning the prosecution's witnesses, and they had a closing argument. What did you think of their case? Did they give you any moment of hesitation, any pause to think twice about what the prosecution was saying? Uh, <laughs> I... I was actually, I mean, I know that, the, I mean, that we get we given instructions that the defense never had to come up with witnesses or come up with a defense at all, really. We knew that from the beginning, but I was honestly very surprised that we at least didn't get some witnesses that supported that she might have been manipulated by Chad um, or some psych evaluation that might have helped uh, their defense. Would that have changed your opinion? Well, it depends on what the psych evaluation said, you know, right. I don't know, maybe, I mean, I, it's hard to speculate on something that I never got to, I never got to see any witnesses or defense. She didn't take the stand either. Now, jurors are not supposed to take that into their consideration when they render a verdict, but you know, the fact that she chose not to testify, uh, what'd you think about that? Um, that's actually one of the juror questionnaires, like or the, or the questions on the questionnaire was, do we think um, the defendant should have to testify? And I marked no. I, I feel like any person who is being on the stand and being interrogated might slip up, you know, even if they didn't commit a crime. I just don't know. Not everybody can say what they mean and mean what they say when they're being interrogated on the stand. So I, wasn't surprised that she didn't take the stand. Would there have been anything that she could have said that maybe would have changed your opinion? I mean, if she came on the stand and threw her brother under the bus and threw Chad under the bus, how would that have related to you? It might have. I, I, again, I'm speculating like what she would have said. You know, if, if she had said I felt manipulated by him, that I never gave any orders to um, cause harm to my kids, you know, that causing harm to my kids was taken out of context by my brother. I mean, anything might have helped her, I think. Would I have changed my mind? I don't know. I mean, again, it's just speculating based on something that just didn't happen. So do you think the defense didn't do a, a, a great job? You think that they, they could have done more? Um, and maybe, maybe they, it was like a missed opportunity a little bit? Well, I guess I, I, I think about the Casey Anthony trial, um, and I relate it a little bit to that. Not a lot, but I mean, I just do feel like maybe that's what I was expecting, you know, because I did know about the Casey Anthony trial and her defense putting on a, you know, great defense for her. So yeah, I'm, I was expecting a little bit more than what we were offered. Although their closing arguments, I just feel it was like a little too late. It's interesting you say that. That's what we were saying on air, too. Is it a little too little too late with what they were saying? Yeah. I do, I do yeah, want to talk like to you. They should have probably said some of that a long time ago. <laughs> Jeez. That's fair. That's fair. Um, 